This is a an attempt to do something with video that I have not usually done in this course, but I'm very excited about doing it because we're coming into a very difficult chapter uh, in this uh, system of logic that we're working with. And so we're introducing some special symbols, uh, and it's called, this is often called symbolic logic. Now that's a, a bit of a misnomer because all logic is symbolic in nature, but this is a logic that introduces special symbols. And so let me uh, introduce you to some of those and the way they will be used in your text in chapter nine, beginning at page 307 and going off of that. The basic symbol that we're looking at is a symbol called conjunction. Another name for this, or another word for this, or, or a synonym, is and. And you may think of this in, as being used in that particular way. The symbol that we introduced for and, uh, and as it was used in your uh, text, is called the raised dot. Now, raised dot simply looks like that. Again, if, you, if this is the line, then this, the and symbol is raised to that particular point. However, uh, given most of our computers, this is a very, very uh, difficult symbol to reproduce. So the one that I will be using uh, in its place is called the ampersand. And it's that particular symbol there, and you can find that on your computer, uh, and I will be using that uh, in the uh, exercises that we do and in the information uh, that I send out to you. So, uh, a symbol has been introduced. We uh, introduce a special symbol for conjunction. Uh, and it's, it's this particular symbol, though your book will use this one. Now, a symbol which is very important, but is also, um, uh, again, widely used, but not uh, uniform or not standard, is the symbol for negation. And that particular symbol is called the tilde. And it's this curly line like that, T-I-L-D-E. And so this means it's not the case that. And so anywhere that you see that in any of the information that we're using, you would say it's not the case uh, whatever it is that you want to deny. So if we're working with an expression called A, not A, it's not the case A, is introduced in that particular way. So we've got conjunction, we've got negation, and those are fairly straightforward. One old problem that you might face with conjunction is that at times people use conjunction as a, uh, to indicate a time sequence, but we're not using it that way. The time sequence would be that she stirred the pot and then she, ser then she served the stew. That would be a time sequence. This is, it's used in terms of just being uh, a, a conjoining together of two expressions by and or by the ampersand, and we don't say that one of them necessarily comes before the other. Now, disjunction gets a little bit uh, more difficult. And disjunction has a special symbol, and it's called, it's the Latin bell, or, but it's, we symbolize it by V. And it's a lowercase v, and that is in your computer, that's on your keyboard, and so you can find it there. So the Three symbols that we've introduced to this point, conjunction, we will use this particular sign for it. You can find that on your computer keyboard. Or, and here, tilde, you can find that, and you can find this. Now, I need to say just a little bit more about conjunction, though, because this is a special uh, type, uh, pardon me, disjunction, I said, I said conjunction. A little bit more about disjunction, because this is a special type of disjunction, or either or. So this is the sign for either or. And here's what's special about it. This particular symbol says that we're saying either A or B, but we might be saying both. Suppose someone sent you an application and they said, check the box at the right if you're over 18 years of age or a male. Now, would you check the box if you were a 19-year-old male? Sure you would. But notice we've used the word or to indicate that either one or other of the other of those has to be satisfied. But this particular or is called the weak or the inclusive or. And, I'm sorry, this is IDE, the inclusive or. And what it means is either one or the other or both. So it's not the exclusive or, which means 
this or that, but not both. So those are some distinctions that we need, need to make. Now, these are special symbols that you need to know about with respect to chapter 9 because we're going to move on and do two very interesting and difficult sorts of things. And we want to move to those right now. And if we were in the classroom, I would pause and say, uh, anybody have a question that you would want to ask? But at this point, uh, we don't have that uh, liberty. So let me erase these, and I'm going to move on to the next topic. The next topic makes use of these symbols, and this particular topic is truth papers. Truth papers. Now, a truth table is nothing more than a record of, uh, of truth or false values with respect to expressions that you use. That's the way we use that particular term in logic. For instance, uh, if I say, it is raining, and the streets are wet, Both of these expressions have a truth-falsity value. The expression to hear, it is raining, has a truth-falsity value. The streets are wet has a truth-falsity value. Now notice what we do to develop a truth table. What we do is we, remember I've already introduced you to the and sign. We take the and and we use the ampersand. And at this point now we say, okay, let R stand for it is raining. Let S stand for the streets are wet. And so all of a sudden now, we have symbolized this particular expression. And so we're going to be doing a lot of that in chapter 9. So you ought to understand that chapter 9 deals with symbols, and it uses symbols as a shorthand for sentences. So that's what we've done to this particular point. We have R and S, or R conjoined to S, and this is because we let this stand for this and this stand for that. Now, I mentioned a truth table just a moment ago, and now we need to get back to that. And here's what we can do. Oh, by the way, each of these expressions do have a truth-falsity value. But I want to show you how we can give truth-falsity values for any conjunction overall. Let's say that we want to talk about what are all the possibilities for A conjoined to B, A and B. If you remember back to your junior high social science class or other classes that you had, remember that this turns out to be true only in the case that both of these are true. So what do we do? We put a T here, and we put a T here, and we're developing an elementary truth table. If this is true and this is true, then this particular expression overall turns out to be true. So this is where we're going to keep track of the overall values here. Some people put it underneath the ampersand, but you can do it either way. Okay, so most of you can understand that. If this is a truth table, what is the overall truth-falsity value of this expression when this is true and this is true? It turns out to be true.